Turkish pop. Your boy Roger Ruby really Cool is here. I'm only doing this video because I have a young man who's trying to get this bad boy out of my hands. And uh, I just went over there to show him the link. That's why I wasn't here. I was trying to wait till he clicked in. I sent him the link so he can tune in and check the bass out. So basically what I have is a Warwick German double buck. That's what I have here. Streamer double buck. As you can see, on the back, the number is 144, 157, 08. So this is a 08. This is 08. And if you want to go to Warwick and check out the number, you can. In fact, I'll do it real quick. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Is that a fragrance review? Is that fragrances? Just let my fragrance people know. They you ask me about fragrances, and I got a bass in my hand. Right, so that would be... E dash one four four one five seven F of H. We'll search it. The database must be down. The database is the worst. All right, so I can't find the, uh, yeah, you know I mean. So anyway, forget about that. Sometimes Warwick database is the worst. Like I was looking up a base the other day, a young man was selling, and I looked up on the database, and earlier in the day, it was there on the database. Next thing you know, I went back to look at it a little bit later, and it wasn't there on the database. So I'm not sure what up, what's up with Warwick database, but they are in Germany, so maybe it could be it's down or something like that. Let me make sure my baby's in here straight. I don't want them tripping and falling. All right, so anyway, I'm going to play this bass and let my man hear it. I really don't want to get rid of it. He's selling the Music Man HS. The only way I was thinking about because it it's a, it is an HS bass, all right? And I've never seen an HS Music Man. He got a nice color, too. Decent color. Y'all know me. I'm in the woods. I'd rather have woods. I'm a wood guy. Only one that's not really a wood bass it's the newest one I just picked up, which is my uh, light wave joint, which is a maple top, but it's not, you know, you can't see the wood like you see all the rest of my bases have wood, right? Even my baby here, wood. Of course, the B100 in the back, B10 in the back is, uh, that's, that's wood. I forgot the name of this wood. Sycamore, 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 something like that in that one. So I like woods, and I like this wood. That's why I bought it, because it's a wood base. So I'm gonna play it for my man. I was gonna play it with the drums. Well, I'm not gonna play it with the drums. I'm just gonna play it straight up so my man can hear it, all right? So here we go. No EQ is going through a mix with no EQ and it's coming into, I got a, a, a QS 10.2. I don't have a bass amp. I'm not really into bass amps and all this stuff. So this is what we got. So basically I forgot a guy. We have active is an active. Passive, pull it out. Passive. That's all right. That's cool. That's cool. You're here now, bro. You're here. You're here now. So my man is here checking it out. The good thing about having a YouTube channel is you can do stuff like this, right? All right. So, so basically, this is in passive mode. And in passive mode, you can still blend. In the middle. Sure we don't have any pedals on here. It's a little hot, it's a little loud. Let me turn it down. Sound a little distorted. Here we go. Alright, I'm not sure if you hear it, you should be able to hear it pretty good. Like I 
I said, you were in here earlier. It's a double bump. This is not a Corvette. This is the real Dilly Dell. I changed the knobs out, the gold knobs. In fact, I put the gold knobs, I think, on one of my guitars or maybe one of the basses. Oh, man, I forgot to take them gold knobs off that guitar. I forgot, man. I had, I had, a, um, dad, I forgot to take them knobs off. Well, you would like these anyway if you bought it. They're wood, not, they're called wood cap knobs. And they don't feel all, they don't fit all the way down on the stems because they're kind of shallow knobs, but that's cool with me. Um, and basically I got them because they kind of go at the base a little bit more. So. Okay. That is active mode. Neck pickup. Bridge pickup. Passive mode, I mean, it's passive mode. So it means here the natural bass. Together. Okay, and again, I'll plug just a little bit. Neck. Bridge. Now these, these strings are kind of, they're bright. I mean, they're not bright. They're kind of like in between being flat wounds and being, you know, I guess nickels. But they're not flat wound strings. But when you feel them, they feel like you don't have much of a scribbity scrape on there, but they feel smooth too, so. So now these switches here, you go parallel, full pickup the series. Parallel, full pickup on series like that. I think it's parallel. I'm oh, sorry, the wrong pickup. So I move it up to the neck pickup. And this switch is for the neck pickup. This switch is for the Bridge pickup, right? So next pickup. I think this is parallel. I think the one in the middle is supposed to be the full pickup. But it sounds like it's splitting though. All the way down, it's like it's a full pickup. which I think is parallel. Now to the bridge pickup, same thing. I think parallel. What makes this cool, like I said, you have 15 bases in one. Could you have three splits, right? So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you got your active when you pop that in. And now you got the bass, trouble. This is the trouble. Mm 
Mi. And then bass. Turn all down, bass. Kick them both in, and just get the switching all over the place. So you got all the switches, you know what I mean? So you got three switches for two pickups, right? So we we'll go three, six, right? Three for each pickup, so that's six potential sounds, right? Six times two is 15. That's my ad. And you add in the, the bass, middle, and treble, 15 sounding basses if you want. And you got the passive and active. Now, there's a good chance that this battery is probably kind of dead. Because I really don't keep. And back on the back, there's not uh, there's not a lot of belt, belt rashes. I mean, you got a little bit of belt rash, but. There's nothing major. I can't get the thingy because, hold on, make sure we don't bang my baby. Because I don't know if I want to get, I don't know if I want to trade this. If I think they'll probably sell it, I don't know if I would trade it. I can't get back off because my nails are very brittle, so I can't do that. But anyway, no belt rash. Little mark, I think, like something there right there, maybe. But it's not a, it's not a crack or anything like that. Here, I feel something right here. I feel something right there. A little something right there. The case with the, the compartment cover. And then, of course, you got the bag. Of course, you got the wood. There's a little bit of patina going on. Slight patina back here on the gold. Slight patina on the gold. I can't put it, but it is slight patina going around the gold. Slight patina. Nothing major, but it is slightly patina. All right? Um, you got the Warwick strap locks, if you want to put those in there. But really, these aren't like these strap locks. These right here, you put the strap lock, click, 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 they click in. These won't click in, but it has like the, has the, the witch columns there. It has like the grooves there for a good, maybe a different kind of um, a Warwick uh, strap lock. Like these right here, strap lock, it clicks right in. On this base right here, they click right in. And on, that's it. Forgot I sold the other base, right? I sold the, uh, I sold it, what, the 30th anniversary limited edition, whatever it was, I sold that bad boy. Kind of wish I didn't. Now, you know what I mean? So sorry you can't really hear it because I'm not usually using a bass amp. And my camera is horrible when it comes to trying to do direct in. This, this phone is not gonna be a good direct in, so I didn't want to do that either. But this is it, bro. combination of that if you use algebra because I mean there's six different you know six different connections you can six different settings you can do right but if you did this one this way and then that, that one that, that's one two and if you did like this and did that that's one two if you did that and did both of them down that's one two if you had both of them up that's another one and if you had that one down to the second and this one down to that one that's another and if you had that one all the way down this one in the second that's another so there's a, a gazillion different sounds you can have in this do I want to trade this for a Music Man HS? I've never heard of Music Man HS before. I've heard of regular Music Man. Yes, I have. 
I had. I had a double buck music man, just like this. That's why I ended up getting this double buck. Because I had a double humbucker music man, beautiful blue. Oh, man, I still have pictures of that. Every guitar I probably used to have, I still have pictures of those. And uh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, 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 uh, it was a beautiful bass. Didn't want to get rid of it, but I think I went to buy something for the studio. So I ended up selling it because I went to buy something for the studio. As you see, it split right down the middle. All United States Edge. I don't want to bump it up and get something, man. United States Edge. You can see that line going all the way around the back. Of course, you got the carved Spectre body. Because <laughs> people, well, yeah, they were suing it because like, they're ripping off the Spectre. Kind of, you know, yeah, you know I mean. On the body, right? And as you can see, I can show you because I have a Spectre. And basically, I sold my other um, Warwick to buy the Spectre from this guy. He has a, he has, but he don't have a maple neck. He has a Euro, just like this, this is a Euro Spectre, as you can see. Euro. Contour body. And this bad boy's hot, man. This is just too loud sometimes. And there's only, there's only a nine volt in here, but this thing is loud. Very loud. It's like, you know, there's no active. I mean, it's, it's all always active. There's no active. They should have put an active passive switch in here. Something, man. And that's why I want another five string. I want a five string with a maple neck because this is a five string with a rosewood neck, European Spectre, and I couldn't find any Spectres that had. I couldn't find any specters that had a rosewood neck. I mean, a, a maple neck that were within my price range. Now, the only other maple neck I have, of course, is Mrs. Rickenbacker here has a maple neck. But it's only a four. And, you know, only Rickenbackers sound like Rickenbackers. This is not going to sound. I call this the hallway guitar. Because it sounds like you're in a hallway with this. And I always got to... I gotta use my uh, Empress, I gotta use my Empress Effects Para EQ pedal to boost this up. Cause you know, if you wanna switch in the vintage mode, you lose a lot of power. A lot of people like that vintage mode. That's what they buy it for. See, so vintage mode, when you have it down to the pickup back here, barely here. Pull that vintage mode out. That means I gotta go here and crank up this preamp. To get that sound. And now I gotta turn it back off. We're ready to kick it back into normal. And the first thing I did when I picked up this Rickenbacker was plucked on it. People are like, you can't, you don't pluck on a Rickenbacker? Yeah, whatever, man. And I got the thumb rest here. I bought the Zero Mod Thumb Rest. You can't see it because it's clear. The Thumb Rest, it's called Zero Mod. You get them in black, you can get them in white, whatever. There, there's a guy making a leather pick guard who makes a leather pick guard for this. This is one like $95 for it. And it's a leather pick guard. So since I thought about maybe buying that leather pick guard from him, maybe someday in the future, and it kind of matches this walnut, I said, let me get a clear Thumb Rest. But I don't even use the Thumb Rest. I don't play like that. I don't really play like that. But if I wanted to, I can. I'd rather play on the string like I've been doing. Well, at least you can go up here and get it. We need to get it. You know what I mean? And I'll do all that. You know, I get tired of looking at videos, guys who playing bass at the demo basses. First they do that, pluck thing in there. I'm not into that. I'm just a smooth jazz player. That's 
that's how I play bass, man. I don't, I don't get in all that trickery and treachery and all that stuff, man. All the, the triple plucking and the double thumb lobster clawing and all this craziness. Nah, nah, I don't play like that. And I can't play like that on my baby right here. She don't, she don't like me to play like that anyway. And my wife, come on, wifey. Wifey definitely doesn't like to get plucked. Because if I wanted to, I could put some flat, I mean, some round rounds on this joint and pluck it. I can really pluck it and pluck it if I got to. I mean, but I'm not going to do that because she don't like that. So I'm doing some, some new soul. Yeah, you got to get, you know what I mean? Yeah, this could use a thumb rest, but I would never put a thumb rest on this because it's all sycamore. Now I think the, the sides and the back are sycamore and the top is some kind of freaking spruce. I think the top is spruce and anything around here is sycamore, like a sycamore tree. And the thing about it is, this bad boy got reverb in the preamp. So if I can select, which I haven't done yet, because I don't really play this, I'm just a collector. Only time I play this bass, like, all right, I got this song, I just got finished composing the track. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, I can use a, I can use a nice. A, you know, a nice little, you know, you know I mean on here. I'll grab, just pick this up, or I might use this fretless, or I might use my Godin fretless. Now, I used to have a Warwick fretless, but I didn't need that many fretlesses around here, and the Warwick was just too hard, you know what I mean? It was too aggressive. And if I was gonna have aggressive, I was gonna have my baby right here, my wifey. Let wifey poo get aggressive with it. I mean, but when I really want to get really nasty, then I pull out this bad boy right here. This joint's loud too. This bass is loud as I don't know what. Man, I can never get the levels right with this. Hold on. And input jack be lunching sometimes. I gotta see if the connection is something going on with this joint. But uh, yeah. snarl because I can get that snarl out of this man. This got built in snarl for days. What I do I turn down the I turn down the high and just turn the bass up. I heard that because you can't really feel the bass in this, <laughs> but if you turned it up enough, you think it'd be crazy. Like I got the speaker turned down really low. It's a 2000 watt speaker, right? Now if I want to turn some highs up in there, we'll put some mids in there, give a little bit more snarl. Turn up the highs. Put some mids in here with the highs. You gotta, gotta do something to get them highs up. Now this is an ebony neck, so you get that. And sustain on this is crazy. Cause you have a piezo. And a piezo will ring for a little while. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be magnetic. 
Now, the other bass I had, I had an A4SA, which was Palazzo, and it had a magnetic pickup. But uh, I took that one back in favor of this because I didn't need two Godans that was acoustic. So if you want to get down like that, you know what I mean? We can do a little yeah, I mean, right? Here we go. So now you're not hearing the acoustic part of me. Here, you know what I mean? Somebody came up to one of the groups and said, man, you got to use basses you can't play. Well, I can, I can hold a beat. Like, I can hold a beat on my drums. I can play keyboards enough to compose. And I can play guitar a little bit, right? <laughs> if I had just bought this, I would have bought my man bass straight out, but I couldn't pass up a PRS. Can't pass up PRS, baby. At the price I got it. Man gave me a really good price on this. So you can't pass it up.
gonna be playing around. I got a lot of pedals down here. I got all kind of crazy pedals down here. I got a striving pedal. I used to have a lot of striving pedals and all that stuff. I, I sold just the ones. I just I sold all the strivings because they were too complicated. That's the timeline, the Mobius, and the uh, what timeline Mobius? Timeline Mobius. Oh, and Blue Sky. They were too complicated. I didn't need that kind of pedal. They more the studio pedals for me. I won't put them on my pedal board. But anyway, I sold those and I ended up. Um, I got my money back on them too. I didn't lose any money because they got bought for three hundred and I sold them for three hundred each. And uh, I got my Strymon Volante, which is the crazy echo pedal. And you can make it sound like like an old an old tape machine with the echo. You'll be able to hear when I'm pushing all these buttons. I rarely use it. So you hit, you hit that tape wear, you get the mechanic tape wear, you got a low cut, you got a, how much wear you want on the tape heads. You can go with like a, a regular drum tape head or a studio tape head or a regular tape tape head. How many repeats you want, the spacing if you want them close. Y'all hear that? And they got reverb built in too. Crazy pedal. I really like the split on this guitar. That's why I bought it too. I really like the split on this. It's just like getting levels right down here. But again, I don't worry about getting levels right until I get back in the studio and I start plugging into my DIs and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Let me like... that much because I'm a, I'm just a producer. I'm a producer that like good guitars and like good stuff because when I go to make my songs, when I go to do what I have to do to compose, I don't want to eat amateur at night at the Apollo equipment, you know? So that's why I just invested, uh, I invested some coin in a lot of gear. So this 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 uh, video is to answer my man's question from one of the groups. You got a lot of basses, but can you play? And like I told him, I'm just a jack of all, master of none. I don't know how to play anything. I've been doing this all my life. I never wanted to learn how to, I don't know how to read music, I don't know how to do anything, but I have four CDs out, you know? So, I, have, I mean, four albums out, and I have three in the pocket that um, I can put out. And I've been doing well, and again, I'm I'm a Recording Academy member and I'm a Grammy member, so. And I did all this work in a regular nine to five job. So man, I'm just, I'm just thankful to be able to do what I do. And when I meet new people like, you know, RP, you know, whether you talk about basses or selling guitars and all this stuff, man, it's good to really meet other musicians because if everybody was so great, man, everybody had Grammys, everybody had Emmys or whatever, whatever awards or music awards. I don't know a lot of people in my circle that are Grammy members. In fact, I don't know any Grammy members in my circle besides me. You know what I mean? I don't know a lot of people who put out albums besides me. So, 
you know, again, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that, you know, you can do anything you want to do. And you can have all the best guitars in the world. I can have all these. But if I haven't dropped at least a couple albums or I haven't, I produce, uh, you know, music for like major artists. So I've done it as well. I've done remixes for Jill Scott, uh, Pink. I've done some stuff with Pink, uh, uh, Barbara Russell. Uh, who else did I work with? Boys and Men as a technical advisor. I was with Boys and Men. I like to keep my book around to show that because people are like, oh, you work with Boys and Men? Well, I'm in this book right here. Boys and Men, Us to You. And I can turn to the page where I'm in the studio with LL Cool J. Where are the, where the studio picks? It was crazy one day because my man called me and said, yo, man, we in the Boys and Men book. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, we in the Boys and Men book. I was like, all right, cool, man. It's gonna be hot. Now this is Boys and Men. The story was in Gladwin. This is Boys and Men recording booth. It wasn't even a recording booth. They had the Sony 800 g which is like a five thousand dollar mic. They had that mic, and they just had a partition up in this big behind room. There used to be a factory, and used to be owned by another uh, recording engineer back in the day who used to work on Broad Street. That he bought the spot. That Boys and Men bought the spot, and. They used to record downstairs, like the whole studio was upstairs, and they used to go downstairs to record the vocals. And that, and, and then right here. So you people need you need a vocal booth. Yeah, and what song did they do when LL came by? What song was this? Uh, this was uh one of the I keep wanting to say a roundaway girl. When LL came through, this is um let me make up song. What song were we doing that night? It wasn't a random way, girl. What song were we doing? Because I played guitar a little bit on it. And uh, I couldn't stay. I, did, I was playing the guitar while we was in the studio working on the song. That's LL right there. YA. My man Eric is in the background. That's how I got there. My man Eric told me to come up because they need some help with some samples. So my man Eric was up there just, you know, he said, yo, man, I know somebody who knows how to work with samplers. And that's how I got called up there to Boys in the Studio. All right? And there's Jay in the background. That's Jay, the recording engineer. Real cool guy. And they had all focus right stuff, which was really cool. Now I'm losing my people, man. I'm starting to show my I'm starting to show my work and people starting to go away. It's all good. And you can see I'm way here, back here in the back. Where am I at? Here I am, back here in the back in the recording studio. So you can see you still see my ball head right there. And that's me in the back of the recording studio. LL Cool J and I was working with the MPC samplers. So that's me in the back. Can you see it? See that bald head? That's me in the back of the studio with boys and men working with LL Cool J. So I worked with people, man, I did a lot of stuff. And again, what you got to remember is I've done all this. I did all this while working a nine to five job. I know I'm going to be able to get the right here. Working a nine to five job. You know what I mean? For 32 years, 33 years in March. Next month, March 28th, it'll be 33 years I've been working at my job. I could have played with boys and men. I could have toured with boys and men. I could have did all that, but ah, oh man, I want my job, man. I don't play them games, bro. You know what I mean? And all my friends went and they did the tour with boys and men. They're like, Rod, you sure you want to come? I'm like, uh, nah, I think I want a pension. <laughs> I think I want a pension. You know what I mean? And that's what it was. So all the guys who went on tour, I'm not gonna name any names, but we still friends. In fact, they they helped me with my open mic night when I started open mic night. Same guys who were on the tour with Boys and Men was working with me on my open mic night. So, you know, people like to brag about what they have and stuff like that, and guitars and bass. But if you really haven't really done anything until you really accomplish something, put out some music, play on somebody else's music, do your own music. Mainly is to do your own music. And it's not gonna win a Grammy all the time. I submitted three times. I never won a nomination. But I got to go to the Grammys. I'm a Grammy member. I'm a recording card. I'm a recording academy member. So hey, what the heck? Who cares? I'm sitting here rapping with y'all now, drinking a little glass of wine, trying to figure what I'm gonna do for the rest of the night because I'm at work. And heaven will I be going back to work tomorrow as I normally do. So everything I accomplished, everything I have here, I don't have a wife, I don't have any kids, which kind of helped too, you don't have any kids. I don't have any wife, I don't have any kids, nobody ever bought anything for me, man. Everything I bought, I bought myself. I hustle, I scrape. I can take y'all back and y'all can look at the studio. Y'all wanna look at the studio? And then we're gonna call it a day. I did all to really show my man the bass. But I'll take y'all back to the studio. Come on, let's go. Taking the wine too. <laughs> yeah, turn it around. 
All right, turn around. Yeah, I'll play chess too. I'm a chess player. And y'all can see all the rest of the guitars. Those are guitars y'all can see them in person because people think I'd be lying. My man told me he thought I was spam. Yeah, I'm spamming, all right. Y'all see how I'm spamming. Here's my, my vintage. My, my, um, this is a beautiful guitar, man. That's a beautiful guitar. You can't see it because the light's up. But uh, those are my guitars. And y'all see my, my collar bass. You know what I mean? Look at the case for the freaking, for my wife. That's a big case. That case is as heavy as the bass. This case is almost as heavy as her. Crazy. All right, so let's go. Here's my little mix I use when I do my one-man show. That's all. This is out here, my one-man show. Come back here, I plug everything to that mixer, and then it comes down and goes into my pedal board. Oh, y'all understand my pedal board. Here's my pedal board. So come down, go into the pedal board. Sometimes I use my talk box, too, when I want to add, like, I'm talking like, you know, Roger Troutman and them. Oh, okay, I take you on the tour. Here's my total gym. I like to walk over it and walk by it. Here are my drums. Okay, and here's me on TV, and I'm gonna show you my drums on TV. So I got myself on TV while I'm hanging out with y'all, and those are my drums. These are my Rollins. And usually I have my laptop right there if I'm gonna access some more sounds, like the Stephen Slate 5.5 joints I have. All right, my KS32. This is my keyboard I use when people want to use a weighted keyboard. They want to sit out here and use a weighted keyboard instead of keyboard back in the studio. I can use that one. Here's the mixer I'm using right now. So anything is running through that mixer. Back out this mixer to my QSC. My QSC 10.2. So that's what y'all was hearing the music come out of. That's why it wasn't sounding really good. Because I couldn't turn up loud. I'm in an apartment building. Did I tell y'all that? I live in an apartment? Yeah. Right, I'm turning the lights on real quick. Hold on. Show y'all the studio. Ah! So this is my studio. For the person, again, who thought I was a spammer. This is my studio. And he said, this all, all this stuff right here is for my, my direct ends. If I want to plug basses in and guitars and stuff like that, I use those for my direct ends. Some are tube, some are solid state, like the Phoenix Nimbus. You know what I mean? My laptop, or if I want to use the Universal Twin, or I can use my Claret. Uh, y'all see what's on the floor. That, that's an um, a imitation mode from Behringer. That don't sound good, so I do all my bass lines on that. Personas, my old mix. I had these for years, man. I've had, I've made like seven albums on this, and I had a guy get a record deal with Sony using these. His name is uh, yeah, Gordon Banks. So if you look up Gordon Banks, I work with him too. Now he has a record deal, and he's done a couple of uh, what's going So this is my studios, all my gear. Here's my major mastering gear. I mean, you my five hundred series stuff. Here's my baby right here. Somebody trying to get away from me. I'm not gonna sell it. My Quantum 2 clock. My MPC 1. Ah. My MPC 2000 XL. Like I said, I made, yeah, I made about six albums on this too, using that. Y'all just check out my videos on YouTube. Y'all can see me make a track live. And last but not least, my vocal booth, which is the bathroom. My man made me a little joint I could put over the toilet so you can't tell. And that's my Kiwi mic, and we got a Blue Woodpecker ribbon mic. We have a CV12 Aventone mic. We used to have, I just sold my other mic. I had a TLM 103, I sold it. But this is the vocal booth, and that's the screen. You can see everything that's on my Pro Tools screen, you see back here. And that's me in the mirror. How y'all doing? All right, so that's it. Muhammad Ali, uh, what else y'all want to see? That's it. So now y'all don't want to tour. Here's my guitar hand when I really get serious. This is my Express Mesa Express. <clears throat> that's it. This is my lab. So, RP, I don't think I want to trade you, bro. I'm just going to save up money and buy your base. I'm going to keep my streamer, man. That streamer does a lot, man. That streamer is 25 bases in one, and yours would be another 10 because your piece gets down too. And of course, like I said, I'm a fragrance reviewer too. I'm a co- I collect fragrances as well. So, I don't just not. I'm just doing music, man. I do a little bit of anything, bros. Turn up, turn up all the studio lights. So I do that too. I do that well. So this is my place, man. That's my apartment. Brian Pugh. I ain't seen Brian in a while. What's going on, Brian? Brian Pugh, too. I worked with Brian Pugh like 5,000 years ago. Well, actually, I worked for him. I didn't do anything particularly. Brian Pugh is the man. One of the super duper 
keyboard player here in Philly and everywhere. All right, I'm taking y'all back in my bedroom, but I'm gonna show y'all also that I'm a fragrance collector too, right? I'm showing y'all a bit of my life. I start off just showing off a base to my man, and now I gotta show y'all my fragrance collection. So y'all probably never saw fragrances like these in your life, but these are my fragrances, and I got them covered up. So I'm not just a scepter worker and a guitar player and a producer and all this stuff. I'm also a high-end fragrance collector. And these are my fragrances that you probably can't see. But these are my fragrances. And don't say it like a store. Hey, man, they're like a local store. They're like a store, man. I'm not a store, dog. Just all my fragrances. So these are my fragrances that I have. And actually, I sold a lot, man. I sold a lot of fragrances. But these fragrances you guys never saw, a lot of you probably never saw these brick fragrances in your life. I wore this one today by Ovolta, by DS and Durga. But these are my fragrances that I collect. As you can see, fragrances. Fragrances and more fragrances. And uh, yeah, so these are my fragrances, man. So I'm into everything, y'all. I told y'all, bruh. I do a little bit of everything, man. I play bass, I play guitar, I play drums, I play keyboards. Brian is the best keyboard ever. I don't never play. He should have taught me how to play, man. He should have taught me how to play a little bit better, Brian. I do fragrances, and like I said, I do a little bit of everything, man. Life is to do everything, man. Don't waste your life just doing one thing, man. Try to get into a little bit of everything, man, so you'll be satisfied, you know? I'm just never satisfied. My problem is I'm very satisfied with my life. I live my life to be satisfied. These are my other fragrances, too. These are special fragrances. These are what you call oud fragrances. You know what I mean? They're oud fragrances. But yeah, man, you got to live life, man. You got to live it to the fullest, bro. My watch collection, with the spinner watch thing, the spin watches, whatever. Yeah, man, live life, bro. Y'all got to live life, man. Don't, don't let nobody keep you from living your life, too, man. Life is for the living. And life is for the giving. And life is for the sharing, too. So I thought I'd share y'all just back in my bedroom. Y'all ain't got no business back here. All right. All right. So, yeah, that's what I do. It's a picture of me playing my Telecaster, my long lost Telecaster. Man, I had a Telecaster for a while and I finally got rid of the Telecaster. But it's me playing a Telecaster at a show. We're going to not show you anymore. That's me, man. I'm out. All right. So, that's it. Y'all got to take a tour. I was here just to show my man that bass to see if I want to train him. But I'm not getting rid of that streamer, man. It costs too much. I'll never get it again because they're rare. And uh, no, I'd rather just get his base because his base is not particularly rare, but his price is nice. I'm out, y'all. Talk to y'all later. Y'all be good. Now it's time for me to figure out what I'm going to do for tonight because tomorrow is back to work. Moving trains, man. That's what I do. I drive trains, man. Not all day. If I had to move a train, I'll move a train, stuff like that. But I don't just get on the train and pick up people and drive anymore. I did that like 25 years ago. I don't do it anymore. My last 25 years has been... Chilling. Chilling. All right. I'm out, man. Talk to y'all later. Bada bing, bada boom. Bars, as I always say. And check out my channel, man. Check out my fragrances. Learn about fragrances from me, man. I do a lot of stuff, man. All right. And I have fun. All right. I'm out. Let me see what Brian want to talk about. I'm out, y'all. Talk to y'all later. Be well.